Can a person who has sustained injuries make wudu and tayammum together? And what is the procedure, please? See, the most essential thing is when I want to pray is to wash the prescribed areas of my body. So I have to turn the water in my mouth. I have to uh, uh, um, rinse my nose and blow the water out. I have to wash my face. I have to wash my arms to the uh, uh, elbows. I have to wipe once over my head and wipe, wipe once my ears and then wash my feet to the ankles. That's it. If I sustained an injury that prevents me from washing one of these mentioned parts of my body. So, for example, if I broke or if I sustained an injury in my left arm, when I come to make wudu, I have to see, can I wash that limb or not? If it is not possible, let me see, can I wipe over it or not? What do you mean by wiping? There's a cast. There's uh, uh, some plaster on it. So I can, with wet hands, just wipe over it once. That's sufficient. If this is not possible because there are burns on it, in this case, I have to perform normal wudu on the limbs that I can wash. This limb, because it is not possible to wash it with water, I perform tayammum on its behalf for skipping it. So I've combined between wudu and tayammum. But generally speaking, in 99% of the cases, it is possible for you to wipe because there's a cast over it, there's a plaster, there is tape, there's some sort of bandages that cover the area. So simply with wet hands, you just wipe it once and that would suffice, inshallah. If someone says, I cannot eat, wipe, I cannot do anything of such, not even complete the wudu, make tayammum. I cannot make tayammum. I'm not being able to move. In this case, pray as you are. Prayer is a pillar of Islam. No one is exempted from it as long as you have your sanity, as long as you can think and know and recognize. In this case, you have to pray. You can't make wudu, make tayam, dry ablution. You can't make dry ablution, pray in, the, in, in whatever state you are in because this is the best of your ability.